Currently on screen is the winner for the last video's Steam Code Raffle. Make sure you have contact information under your profile so that I can reach out to you and you can claim the Steam Code of your choice. You can look in the description below to find a complete list of games for your selection. To find out how you can win a game of your choice, just stick around to the end of the video. Thank you for your time, and now on to the main feature. I'm playing something almost every week, and sometimes I want to talk about it and give you a vertical slice. So stick with me for some lightning reviews. This week on The Chopping Block. This week, I've been playing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Cowabunga Collection. This may frustrate a person or two to hear, but I don't really care much for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's not saying I dislike it, it's just never been a high priority on my radar. I did briefly follow one of its incarnations for a while, but that was most of my interest. This extends to the video games as well, though in my time collecting, I eventually got a small handful of titles, although I don't have them now. You see, in the past couple of months, I've been actually in the process of reducing my gaming collection. I live in a small apartment, and it suits me, but that means my space is at a premium, so I've been eliminating redundancies in my collection. Extra copies of titles that I had across multiple systems, or games that were initially released but included later in remasters or compilations have slowly been getting trimmed away, until the point where I can still play a game in some form or another, while still having my storage as close to maximum efficiency as I can get it. That was the first reason why I was interested in the Cowabunga collection. It allowed me to trim two NES games and a Sega Genesis title. The other, though, was the value of this title from a preservationist view. A portion of the games in this collection were never released in their original one-to-one -one incarnations physically apart from standalone arcade cabinets, which means I immediately took interest. There are hundreds if not thousands of arcade cabinets created over the year that have not received physical incarnations for home markets, so from the standpoint of a collector who believes in preservation, this package was a great thing. For a complete list, it includes Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a side-scrolling beat-em-up for arcade and platformer for the NES, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game, also for the NES, TMNT Fall of the Foot Clan, a side-scrolling platformer for the Game Boy, Turtles in Time, a side-scrolling beat-em-up for the Super Nintendo and Arcade, TMNT 2, Back from the Sewers, another Game Boy platformer, TMNT 3, The Manhattan Project, another beat-em-up for the NES, The Hyperstone Heist, yet another beat-em-up on the Sega Genesis, TMNT 3, Radical Rescue, the final Game Boy platformer in this list, and the TMNT Tournament Fighters, a 2D fighting game for the NES, Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis. Thirteen games in total, which is some pretty good bang for your buck. And for clarification, it includes each version mentioned. Now, I'm not going to be doing an in-depth review of each individual game, just a few overarching points shared between a few titles. Because frankly, there's a lot of overlap. Let's start with the easiest. The Game Boy platformers are all incredibly basic. Move to the right, jump when prompted, and attack. The visuals are very simple and you're zoomed in pretty close, making it difficult to see anything more than a few in-game feet ahead. Kind of a given for the platform at the time, but ultimately inoffensive and amusing little time wasters to say the least. Next up are the entries for tournament fighters from the NES, Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis. By comparison to other fighting games I've played, these seem rather simple. That doesn't necessarily mean they're bad though, and I could be entirely wrong. You see, I like fighting games, but I'm terrible at them. This could probably be resolved if I were to have a regular partner to just mess around with fighting games in general, but that's besides the point. Anyway, Tournament Fighter seems like something that would be good to play against a friend while sitting on the couch. Next up is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES, the side-scrolling platformer. It's as bullshit as I remember! Then again, this was the era of the NES, where the majority of the games were cheap, punishingly difficult, or poorly explained, and bing bang boom, we have all three. Nonetheless, it is a nice nostalgia trip, and the addition of save state certainly makes things easier if you actually want to try and complete this game. Finally, we have all the side-scrolling beat-em-ups. This includes Hyperstone Heist, Turtles in Time, The Manhattan Project, and a couple others. In my experience, and what's been confirmed by playing this collection, is that side-scrolling beat-em-ups for me suit well for short-term quick-hit fun. To further clarify, I find the genre frustrating if I play it too long. It was obviously designed to be as punishing and difficult as possible so that it could bilk its target audience for quarters for extra lives. That investment at the outset created a lot of tension for the target audience. However, I've come across a frustration that operates from opposite standpoints depending on whether it's an arcade version or a home version. If it's an arcade version, you can give yourself an infinite number of lives by simply pressing the start button. If it's a home version, your lives are finite and you're sent back to the start of a level. On one hand, the infinite lives for the arcade ports neuters most of the tension and becomes strictly a process of pressing the attack button enough. On the other hand, the home versions get annoying when you battle all the way to the end of a level, only to have some of the cheaper elements of the 
side-scrolling beat-em-up do you in, and then you have to go again, and there are plenty of cheap elements to contribute to that frustration. From spamming hard-to-hit fast-moving or airborne enemies, to environmental elements with no clue as to what they do until you activate them, it's quite clear that this game was meant to extract as many quarters as humanly possible while trying to keep the threshold of frustration low enough to not have the person quit. When playing solo, it can be kind of tedious and grows repetitive quickly. With friends, it has a much stronger appeal through a sense of cooperative struggle. In conclusion to the games themselves, while appreciated as a means of cataloging the gaming history of a specific franchise, the games are of limited appeal outside of the fanbase, and their charm can wear quickly without others to enjoy by your side. However, in a final note, I found a few additional touches to the Cowabunga Collection that extended beyond a simple compilation. The menu style, the graphical flourishes, and the presentation of everything surrounding the base package shows a reverence and care for the series that I wasn't expecting initially considering that most of these games were developed by Konami. The games may be shallow experiences, but there's a deep appreciation for all the surrounding elements. Bonuses such as soundtracks, an archive of all the covers to the various comics, information on all the cartoon series, strategy guides, and all sorts of other pieces of bonus content are impressive if nothing else, and even though I'm not a fan of the series myself, I can't help but admire and find myself envious hoping for something similar can be done for other multimedia franchises that I love. Imagine a compilation of every title of vintage gaming for franchises like Dragon Ball, Star Wars, or any other franchise you'd care to mention that strikes you right in the nostalgic feels, and having them treated with reverence and care as history of those various properties. All right, I'm gonna stop myself there before I get all hot and bothered. Whew. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to watch JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and watch beautiful people fight beautifully for the sake of research. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Now that you're here, if you want to be entered for a Steam game of your choice from a list of games in the description below, then all you have to do is leave a comment that wouldn't violate Twitter's terms of service. The winner will be decided one week from the publication of this video, and they will be publicly announced with the publication of the next video. So make sure you have some means for me to get in contact with you under your YouTube profile, and make sure you subscribe because I do this with every video. So until next time, this is Guillotine saying thanks for watching and keep your head on your shoulders.